For sheer do or die nerve fraying tension, there has never been a last day scenario quite like the one played out at Edgar Street this weekend. Hereford and Brighton met for a match guaranteed to span sports emotional extremes. At the end of Saturday, one of them would be dropping out of the nationwide league. Well, at times in the build up, it felt like a cup final as two sets of genuine diehard supporters turned up the volume. But always lurking just below the surface was the awful truth that time was nearly up for Hereford or Brighton. For once, the importance of getting the right result could not be overhyped. I've been involved in championship sides and playoffs and promotion sides. Never experienced anything like this. This is, this is a massive big winner-takes-all occasion, and it couldn't be uh, a bigger occasion for the players. It's, in, it's an incredible day. There's an awful lot at stake. Um, really, it's not worth contemplating relegation, really, because it it will mean so much to, to everyone connected with the club to stay in the league. Brighton's vain attempt to stay at the Goldstone ground has won them nationwide sympathy and overshadowed other issues like Hereford's plummet to the bottom of the league. They reached the third division playoffs last season and only six weeks ago demotion was unthinkable. I think that the football club, uh, football league club, is vital to, to a city. It's a focal point for, for the city. It brings tremendous publicity, especially to a tourist area like this. Um, when we played Tottenham last year in the FA Cup, the publicity was absolutely priceless for the city itself, and I think people have just come to terms with that now, what they, what they stand to lose if results go wrong today. I'm sure Graham feels exactly as I do, that, that we can't believe we're in this scenario now with 46 points. You know, normally you, you see teams that are perhaps stranded in the mid-30s or... 38, 39 points, and here we are, both on 46, really start fighting to stay in the league, and it's just been one of those incredible seasons, really, as far as this league's concerned. With a sadistic twist of computerised fate to finish it off. As boisterous as the fans were at both ends of the ground, you could see the players trying to shut away the fear, to focus on the greatest challenge of their professional lives. I think it's the biggest game of the weekend in English football without a shadow of a doubt and I think it's the players that can handle that situation that will come out on top. It's a pressure that's certainly not new to us because we've, we've had it week in week out through the season certainly since I've been here it may be new to them so it might be a lot harder for them to cope with. Yet it was the Brighton team who couldn't unwind. Rain just before kickoff had turned the pitch into a glue pot and Hereford acclimatised better. They were sharper, more confident and with Brighton conceding space, Hereford were making chances and working themselves into dangerous positions. And that early dominance was rewarded after 21 minutes. Tony Agana, once a Premier League player with Sheffield United, battled to find space inside the area. And his cross shot was diverted in by Brighton's youngster, Kerry Mayo. Hereford had to win and their escape attempt was underway. Pumped full of adrenaline, Turner's side would have doubled that lead. But Brighton's overrun midfield were being saved by a defence that pushed to the limit, was scrambling for everything. Among the three and a half thousand travelling support were a growing section finding it difficult just to watch. All too often Hereford were making headway and twice early in the second half, Brighton appeared to get the benefit of some generous refereeing. It began to matter within minutes. Ian Baird battled. Craig Maskell anticipated the poor clearance. And Rob Reinout, on as a sub, claimed the goal that completely shifted the survival balance. Hereford had to score. But now their legs looked drained. Now their supporters were silent. Just as ominously, the Bryson goalkeeper Mark Ormerod was revelling in the occasion, stopping shots from distance. And when he did miss his punch, Agana's header dropped agonisingly wide. But the Brighton manager wasn't composing his victory speech. And in the final minutes, you knew why. Brighton's defence froze. Suddenly, Hereford's top scorer, Adrian Foster, was in on goal. And with that moment went Hereford's last chance of prolonging 25 years in the Football League. Brighton had walked the tightrope and reached the other side. And Steve Griss had earned the right to celebrate. Nobody wanted his job back in December when Brighton were 12 points adrift and heading for oblivion. It's been a very, very long and hard five months. It's 
not something I'd really want to go through again, but if I had these going into battle for me, I'd be quite happy. What was it like watching? Uh, tense, nail-biting, and that was just the kick-off. <laughs> I've only been here three months and uh, this is probably the best moment of my career. I've been at Gillingham when they nearly went out of business. I was at Aldershot when they went out of business. Colston nearly out of business, so uh, today I break my duck. I'm obviously very grateful to Brighton for giving me the chance to come back in. And I'm just pleased that I hope I've proved a few people that might have doubted my ability. I hope I've proved them wrong. I think they're grateful to you, Steve. I think they're great. They're magnificent. I've I can't, I can't find the words to describe it. But for the neutral, Hereford's heartbreak will live as long in the memory. Demotion brings with it a unique cocktail of tears and disbelief. And although the club will stay full-time, their very honourable manager immediately offered to do the decent thing. Well, I think as manager, when you finish bottom of the table, you know, you've got to resign. You've, you've no other option but, that, but to do that. Now, it's up to other people then whether they accept that resignation. Um, I'll have to take stock of the situation, I'll have to talk to the chairman, but you feel totally responsible for the thing. Well, Hereford United will be replaced.